Hey everybody. So today I wanted to share some updates with Madlands that accommodate a different way of creating maps that's going to save us some time as well as saving us a lot of code. So let me try and put this into context. So when I first introduced the land randomizer in Madlands, we looked at the map that was called Apennine, and that's what this map is right here. So um, if you haven't watched that video, I recommend you take a look at that to get some context, but um, we'll just briefly recap that when we have an elliptical layout such as this, um, random placement doesn't really work so well. So um, in order to get around that issue, we used Madlands to randomize player spawn locations that adhere to a more consistent elliptical pattern. And so that's what we're looking at here. So if we go into the code of that particular map, let we, what we looked at in that one video was a seven player setup. So we'll go to seven player. So when we um, looked at this, we have different conditionals. So if the map was a four versus three situation, and if team positions was enabled, it generated these various lands based on color. And then if it was a 4v3 and T positions was not enabled, it generated an entirely alternative set of lands using a team assignment instead of a color assignment. And then finally, if the game was not a 4v3 at all, but still seven player game, it generated even different configurations. It was assigned to random players instead of having teammates together. So with all this being said, we're going to do a similar thing to recreate a different map, and we're going to use a different method that's going to be a bit more efficient. So the map that we're going to be taking a look at today is called Coniferous. So basically the way the map looks is players are in a more or less elliptical orientation on the map. So there are two bodies of water on the edges of the map and one body of water in the middle. So as is common with elliptical layouts in random placement, there's always going to be a degree of bias. The players have to stay farther away from the bottom edge as they would be able to stay away from the top edge. So in order to make the map more consistent in its elliptical layout, we're going to switch it from a random placement to a direct placement. And for that, we can use Madlands to do that. And we can also, um, after we've done that, randomize the um, spawn locations so we can mimic the random placement and have a bit more variety. So the key difference in the method we used previously to create this map and what we're going to be able to do now has a lot to do with how we handle the assignments. So we have just went over that in order to obtain different assignments um, for the players, we would need to create an entirely alternative set of lands. So if we wanted to have color assignments versus team assignments, we'd have to repeat the create land statement again. And now the updates in Madlands now make it easier to incorporate different assignments within the same create land statement. So let's see what that would look like. So if we're considering we have a seven player game, we can consider we need a couple different layouts. So if the map is a four versus three situation, and then if we want a team position layout, we would want color assignments. We would assign based on colors. If it's a four versus three and it, um, we're not having team positions, we would want team assignments. And then, and if the map was not a four versus three, but still a seven player game, we would want random assignments. So in order to put those into the assignments, let's um, try this. So if we have a four versus three, then we can assign to at team one zero zero. Otherwise, we can assign to just a random person. So instead of team one, we can assign to team negative 10. 
and then end that if. And so the first three lands are going to have that assignment. And then the next land is going to be assigned to team two when it's a four versus three situation. And it's going to be assigned to, again, a random person if it's not a four versus three. And then the next three lands are going to be um, taking that assignment. And then the final land, since we have already placed three members of team one, three members of team two, is always going to be assigned to a random person. And that's because if we've already placed six players, there's only going to be one player left. And so if we randomly assign it, it's always going to choose the player left over. So in this way, we can assign to at team negative 10, regardless of whether the um, map is a four versus three or whether it's just a generic seven player setup. So with these assignments, we have taken care of the random assignments and the team assignments. Now we need to consider how would we tackle the team position layout. So back in the land randomizer here, when we had options to enable team positions before, what this would do in the previous version of Madlands is it would override whatever um, assignment was already inputted into the land. Now what it does is it includes a team position assignment which is built in alongside the assignment that's already here. So we can take a look at the randomizing and we can see what that looks like. So if we take a look at seven lands and enable the default team positions, let's take a look at what that does. So we have our individual land statements generated here. And so let's just take a bit of a closer look at um, this one here. So we'll go to new file and we'll take a closer look at the assignments. So if we have a team position layout, if the team direction is one, it'll assign to a certain color. Otherwise, it will assign to a different color. If it is not a team position layout, and it is a four versus three, we can assign to team one. Otherwise, we can assign to a random person. We end this if, and we end this if. So basically, all of the assignments are now included into the same create land statement. So now there's no need to reconfigure and repeat the land statements um, every time we need to change the configuration. Actually, this is supposed to be over here, but you get the picture. So um, as we can see, this should be saving us quite a lot of code. And if we go and test our map in those different configurations, we can see what happens. So let me copy the lands that we have just created. We've created 12 configurations. And we can put that into the seven player condition in the test script. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So we have our appropriate test map selected and we have configured the players to have seven players total in a four versus three situation. And as we can see, team positions is enabled. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So, um, since the team positions are enabled, we have the warm color team versus the cool color team. So red, yellow, and purple are on the team together. And predictably, yellow should be the pocket in this situation, which is exactly what we're seeing. And then in the team of four, we have blue, green, teal, and gray on the team together, where green and teal are the pockets, and blue and gray are the flanks. 
exactly the way a team position layout should be. So let's try this again, and let's try to disable team positions and see if that ends up correct also. So let's disable team positions, and we'll see if we get a different configuration. So we can see that red, yellow, and purple are all on a team together. Yellow has randomly chosen the pocket, even though that would be the same as it would be if team positions were enabled. But if we look at the other team, we can see that where green was the pocket in the previous scenario, he is now the flank, and gray in the previous scenario was the flank and is now the pocket. So the, as we can see, the teams are not necessarily placed based on their color. They're able to take random locations, but still keep the teammates together. So that layout is generated correctly also. And then finally, we can try something that isn't a four versus three situation. So if I make this final person on a different team, this should no longer satisfy the four versus three conditional. So we can take a look at what we have here. We have red, purple, and yellow all on the same team together, and they happen to randomly spawn together. But we can see on this other side of the map that the gray player has no teammate. The, te the other team of three is teal, green, and blue, and they are not together. So this layout is generating as we would expect also the teammates have taken random positions and let's try and get another random seed and in this case um, the one color team is no longer together also so we have red yellow and purple not together so we can see by this that because it's no longer a four versus three situation, that everybody is taking random positions regardless of what team they happen to be on. So that's generating as we would expect it to generate. So hopefully with this, we've been able to show how previously, if we ever wanted to change the assignments, we would have to reconfigure and regenerate all of our different configurations every time we change the assignment. But now we can do that all in the same step, which is um, saving us a lot of time, as well as a lot of code. And if we wanted to do a similar thing for an eight player setup instead of a seven player setup, we can do that also. So we can change the angle increment to 45 degrees and then change the assignments also. So notably, since this is going to be eight players, we our conditional is not going to be four versus three anymore. It's going to be four versus four. And if it's a four versus four, it will assign the first four lands to team one. And then if it's a four versus four, it'll assign the next four lands to team two. So um, if that's good, then I can go into the land randomizer, um, make sure we are including eight lands instead of seven, and we can generate all 12 configurations. and it should have been able to generate our code for eight players also. So if I copy this over and I can paste it into the eight player setup. So it would have been able to include all of the different assignments into the same create land statement. So basically in the similar fashion to the seven player layout, if it's a team position layout if team one direction is one way it'll assign the colors one three five and seven and if the team direction is not one it will assign it the opposite way seven five three one and then if it's a four versus four and team positions are not enabled it'll just assign randomly team one together and team two together and then also if 
it's an eight player setup and not a four versus four it'll just assign everybody randomly so just to do a quick comparison i put this little chart together to demonstrate how many individual lands were needed to create a given map so the player number is here and the amount of lands needed to achieve a certain um, configuration are listed here so since we had a 12 configurations for a two-player setup that means 2 times 12 is 24 and then we can similarly see that all the way throughout here and then the different configurations come into play when we are able to have team positions versus not being able to have team positions so if we culminate all of those individual lands we can compare that where previously we needed a total of 1404 create land statements, we were able to reduce that using the updated method down to 420 lands. And perhaps more importantly, the number of times that we have to configure mad lands in the assignments, we, in the previous method, we had to configure it 16 times, changing it every time we needed a different assignment. Whereas now that we're able to do all of them at the same time, we only need to configure it a total of seven times. So that should kind of put into perspective um, that this new method is more efficient, takes less than a third of the code and less than half of the individual steps needed to achieve the exact same thing. One other thing I wanted to mention is that the common generic code that checks the team sizes to define the different configurations, whether it's a four versus three or three versus three, has also been reduced. So where previously we were checking teams one, two, three, and four for their sizes, when we take a look at the new way of checking in test, we can see that we only check a maximum of teams one through two. And the way that works is because when these team checks are going on, it doesn't look at all at the team number here. It only basically looks is, is it finds the first player in the game who has a teammate and that team is team one. And then it looks for the first player that has a different team and then it assigns that to team two. And we can show, we can actually prove how that works if we set my team now to team three. So basically we have no check at all in the game um, for team three. So we can say if team three, we can see that doesn't exist. And this should still work for us because teams one and two are still valid because it just found the first player that has teammates and assigned that to team one. And then the first player who had a different team started team two so we have the warm color team together and the cool color team together just like we want so that's going to about do it for the updates in madlands itself and now i'm going to switch gears a bit and talk about this map as a whole so as we saw previously this map um, similarly has bodies of water on the sides and one in the middle here there are patches of ice around that make it hard to wall. Notably, there's always going to be some ice that surrounds the water, which is going to make it impossible to um, use the water to help wall. So that's true on this side, as well as it is true on this side. There's always going to be at least a tile or two that prevents walling to the edge. So, um, as we can see, we don't really have much ability to distinguish between what ice is buildable and what is not. It blends in pretty seamlessly, which in some cases can be good. Um, but for this particular map, I decided that I wanted different seasons. So the fact that this is a winter season makes it pretty seamless when we are talking about what terrains we want to blend because ice and beach ice uh, blends very well together since they have the same texture. 
But let's just say that I wanted to have a different season, which was not winter. What would that look like? So in order to have the map play out the same way, I had to use, instead of ice, a terrain that mimics the same properties, which in this case, DLC Rock achieves that for us. But we can notice here that it doesn't always look as good because the rock terrain doesn't always blend in very well with the beach compared to um, the winter version where the ice and the beach ice blend in very seamlessly because they have the same texture. So, um, something I wanted to mention is that this white beach is not the only texture that we have available to us. Um, the game has quite a few options for beach, including um, the icy beach, which we already looked at, whiter beach with vegetation. We have options for uh, wet beach, which has a darker sand texture. We can have gravel. We can have uh, a rocky beach also. So um, what is important to know is that if we ever want to change the texture of a, a beach, um, besides the default, we have to consider that the beaches are determined after the terrain generation section is complete. So in order to override that, we have to go into a connection section. So that's what this is going to be, this connection statement is going to be doing. If the season is not winter, then we can replace the beach texture with a gravel beach texture. And we'll see what that looks like here. So if we take a look, we can see that instead of the white beach, we now have a gravel beach. But still, that doesn't blend in quite so seamlessly with the rock terrain. So what we can do additionally is that we can layer some dark gravel on top of the rock to make it have a different texture. So now we can take a look at our rock terrain and we can notice that the gravel is layered on top of it. And if we take a look at the shoreline here, we can see that it blends in a lot more seamlessly than it did previously. And of course, since we only put the gravel on top as a layer, this texture, I mean, this terrain will still take the same properties as rock and not allow anything to be built on top of it. So I realized that was a bit off topic, but I still thought it was worth mentioning. And with that, I think that's about all I have to say for this video. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.